Hey everybody, Jeremy Siskin here. Um, I am the author of this book, which I guess you can see over here, called Playing Solo Jazz Piano. Um, I also uh, want to mention that I'm uh, currently taking signups for a uh, very affordable course uh, that I run through my community college um, on uh, basic jazz piano. Um, I'm throwing a link in the comments. You can go to jeremysiskin.com slash jazz class to learn more. So today's, um, today's subject was actually brought up uh, by a message from uh, one of my subscribers. And he basically said he's having this problem that he can play with a metronome reliably and can stay with it. Um, but as soon as the metronome's off, his tempos start creeping up. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, this is a problem that I also have. I've gotten better and better at it as my career has gone on. Um, but my tendency is to rush. Um, mostly, I think, because I want to try to make things rhythmically exciting and interesting. Um, and sometimes that means playing more on the front side of the beat. Um, but we don't want to rush. We want our tempos to end pretty close to where they start. It doesn't have to be exact. Nobody's measuring you. And in fact, occasionally, um, you know, some of the recordings that I love most do creep up in tempo. Um, but we want to be able to maintain a tempo. Um, and so I have six ideas in terms of what to do if you have this similar problem that your tempo tends to pick up. And uh, before we get to number one, let me just say that, you know, this isn't a problem that you solve. You know, it's not like what's the correct scale for a C major seven. This is a process that you're going to keep coming back to and deepening uh, practice session after practice session, week after week, month after month, year after year. So these are kind of experiential things that can help you. So the first thing, uh, <clears throat> like I said, this person wrote me and said that he could stay with the metronome, um, but I would encourage you still to start with metronome practice and try practicing with the metronome in some different ways. So lots of people practice with the metronome on all four beats. I'm gonna get out my metronome here so I can demonstrate. Um, it's not really a mystery. should be able to play with the metronome on all four beats. If you can't, start there. Um, after that, if you don't already practice this way, I would practice with just two clicks per measure, right? You could practice with the metronome on beats one and three. especially important for jazz because the hi-hat in jazz keeps the time on beats two and four. And then it's really good to test just how good your time is by trying it with just one beat per measure. So you gotta, you gotta turn the metronome on really slow. I'm gonna go down to about 35 here. scary doing that, knowing it's going to go out in the video, uh, because it's really tricky and there's so much space. So that was with the click on beat one, but I would encourage you to try practicing it on each of the four different beats. And if you want to get really tricky, you could practice it on some of the off beats. So four, one, two, three, four, one. centers a really grooving sense of time. <clears throat> but try it on two and three as well. I'm not going to take your time and show you every single possible beat. You know, it's also, so I love practicing with the metronome in that way because it makes you really focus on the time. Um, it makes you super accountable 
to um, to where the time is. There's also some fun metronome games you can play. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do them today. Putting the metronome every three beats. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. as well. The second thing that I would consider is foot tapping. And now I'm not here to tell you that there's one right way to foot tap. For some people, um, foot tapping is a problem. <laughs> the problem is that it makes them tense or it hurts their coordination. And so my first suggestion is to know yourself. Okay, if you're somebody who foot taps every beat and you're kind of throwing yourself off balance, try playing without foot tapping at all. Whatever the situation is, I want you to become conscious of foot tapping. And I would practice foot tapping in these same ways. So I would practice tapping all four beats. of the rhythm. I know we tend to focus on notes and hand coordination and scales, uh, but when you do these kinds of exercises, you're really thinking about the rhythm. So become conscious of your foot tapping. Try doing something that throws you off and really makes you think rhythmically. Um, the third thing is something that I've been doing a lot of lately, which is to practice solo while imagining, particularly the ride symbol of the drums or how the bassist might be playing. So what I do here um, is I'll usually listen to a recording of a band that I love, maybe the Oscar Peterson Trio with Ed Thigpen playing drums, or maybe Miles Davis's first quintet with Philly Joe Jones playing drums, and I'll really firstly try to zone in on the ride cymbal. And then I'll hit pause, and whatever tune I'm playing, I'll try to keep that in my head. stupid as it is, doing this hand motion, pretending as I'm pretending like I'm playing the ride cymbal helps me focus on that. Or I can focus on the bass and then hear in my head a bass line in two. You know, hear Ray Brown or, or Paul Chambers. Jimmy Garrison or somebody playing a bass line into And as soon as I find myself not focusing, I stop. I might go back and listen to that recording again. I refocus and I start again. So focus is really the key. If you're not really focused, it's not gonna change anything, right? You're just gonna be kind of reinforcing your old habits.
Number four is really important and one of the most proactive things you can do, which is to conscientiously practice changing rhythmic units. This is one of the places that I see students rushing the most, is when they change, for example, from playing eighth notes to playing eighth note triplets, or when they change from playing eighth notes to sixteenth notes. So what I would do is, with the metronome, and then try it without the metronome, practice conscientiously saying, okay, I'm gonna trade two bars of eighth notes, two bars of eighth note triplets. so differently and particularly from eighth notes to sixteenth notes we're really going from feeling one two three one two three one two three one two three to feeling so it's a big difference really between dividing the beat into three parts versus four parts so you want to get it to the point where you really confidently can keep the tempo exactly the same that no matter what the rhythmic subdivision is that you're using so I think that's a really useful exercise um, and by the way I encourage you to do it with quarter notes, offbeat quarter notes, so. Right, da, ah, ah, because those also have the tendency to rush. Uh, quarter note triplets, eighth notes, eighth note triplets, uh, sixteenth notes. Um, I'm doing a lot of five couplet practice, so you can try that too. Let's see if I can do this. consciously changing between rhythmic units. Number five is something that I've really found helps me and a lot of my students, which is focusing on the coordination between the right hand and left hand, and making sure that in beats where they're supposed to hit right together, that they hit exactly together. Because one of the things that I find is that my two hands have a slightly different sense of time, and that's true for a lot of jazz pianists. So instead of focusing on the rhythmic unit, or on where you're tapping, or on scales or chords, focus on having the chords come exactly with the melody notes. So. And it just makes my rhythm feel so clear, instead of sometimes it can be a little bit ragged between the two hands. So I don't have a lot to demonstrate there, it's just a matter of focusing in. And it could be uh, with any comping pattern or with no pattern at all. You could try it with the Charleston. If you wanted to start with an exercise, you could try just playing a simple scale. You might be noticing that I'm also looking at my hands um, because eyes you know, as much as music obviously is an auditory art form, but eyes help your ears focus. It helps tell your brain what you're, look, what you're listening for if you're staring at it. And I can really tell whether my two hands are coming exactly together if I'm really staring at them. just just focusing in on whether the right and left hand are coming together exactly. The sixth thing is a very long-term project, uh, but learning a little bit of drum set really helps. Um, because with the drum set, of course, you're stripping away the other things that you might focus on. You're stripping away the notes and chords and scales and everything else that you can think of. Um, and you're really focusing on your sense of time, of course, what, what limbs are coming together, and you're gaining this coordination which I think is often what can throw off our sense of time. Um, so learning a little bit of drum set uh, is highly recommended. Um, even if you're just tapping, you 
go start with the ride cymbal pattern in the right hand, and I've got my hi-hat going in the foot. Play along with albums. And then practice different comping patterns in the right, in the left hand. It's hard to talk while doing this. So I could do my Charleston. My reverse Charleston. And you can even add some bass drum feathering in the right foot. You know, really nice soft quarter note tapping. So I hope that you like those ideas. Those are six ideas of what to do um, if you find yourself rushing. Um, if you're somebody who has this problem or has uh, different solutions, give me some comments. I'd be really curious to know what your solutions are. Um, all right, thanks everybody. Just a reminder, you can order my book from my website. You can also uh, check out uh, the link below to learn more about my jazz class, which will start in about a month. Um, I've got some great videos coming up, so stick around here. I'll see you soon.